Hush, Watson, whispered Alistair Moriarty, his voice barely a rasp. If you have something to impart, I can spare you perhaps five minutes. A restless energy crackled around Alistair as he paced the confines of the room. What transpired next, you pressed, eager to glean the full narrative. Alistair paused, his gaze distant as if reliving the encounter. Moriarty inquired if I intended to persist with my investigations, he continued. The answer, as you can well imagine, was self-evident. A sardonic smile played on his lips. He didn't require mine, he continued. He reached into his pocket, and a cold dread washed over me. Instinctively, I reached for my firearm, but instead of a weapon, he produced a notebook. In a voice that sent shivers down my spine, he read aloud, listing the dates of our encounters, the 4th of January, you passed me on the street. The 23rd of January, you became an obstacle. Mid-February, you were causing significant problems. Now, at the end of March, I've had to alter my plans. And here we are, a month later, with you attempting to snatch my freedom. We both recognize this charade cannot continue. He spoke the truth, you conceded, a knot of tension tightening in your gut. Indeed, Alistair acknowledged. It will not. Grant me three more days, and this charade will culminate. You are a captivating adversary, Alistair, Moriarty remarked. According to Alistair's recollection, I confess, I find myself rather bored without your presence. You see that smile? It's genuine. But heed my words, this little game you're playing is far too perilous. Danger is a familiar companion, Alistair retorted. It's an inherent aspect of my profession. This transcends mere danger, Moriarty countered, his voice rising. This is madness. There's an entire organization behind me. Do you truly believe you can dismantle it single-handedly? There's only one conclusion to this, Alistair, Moriarty continued his voice laced with a chilling certainty. We both know the outcome. I find your company stimulating, Edgar, Alistair admitted, a glint in his eyes despite the dire situation. However, I have an unfinished task at hand. I'm privy to your every move, Alistair, Moriarty threatened. If you attempt to destroy me, I will reciprocate in kind. You flatter yourself, Alistair countered, if you believe me capable of resorting to such measures. However, I wouldn't hesitate to embrace my own demise if it meant ridding the world of you, Moriarty. Such a shame, Moriarty sighed as he turned towards the door. But you leave me with no alternative. Alistair described Moriarty as a man of his word, a man who wasted no time. On his way back to your surgery, Alistair narrowly escaped death three times, a runaway carriage, a falling stone, and a mugger lurking in the shadows. It was a testament to his exceptional reflexes and situational awareness that he emerged and scathed. You can comprehend now, Edgar, Alistair said, his voice grave, why a departure through the front door wouldn't be prudent. Despite your protests, 
Alistair insisted on leaving through the back wall after outlining a plan for the following day. I'll see you tomorrow morning, he said, handing you a note. Follow these instructions meticulously. Destroy the note afterward. Where will we meet, you inquired. The train, he replied. The third carriage from the front is reserved. The following day, you meticulously followed Alistair's instructions, ensuring your movements wouldn't attract unwanted attention. Taking the third cab that arrived, you directed the driver to a location away from the station, where a horse-drawn carriage awaited. Without a word, the driver whisked you towards the station, just in time for the express train bound for France. You sprinted towards a carriage with a reserve sign, your heart pounding in your chest. Relief washed over you as you entered, only to be replaced by confusion. A priest sat across from you, not Alistair. Alistair, you questioned, bewildered. The carriage was supposed to be reserved for just us. That's correct, Edgar, the priest replied, his voice a low rumble that sent shivers down your spine. In that moment, you recognized the man beneath the disguise, Sherlock Holmes. We must be discreet, he murmured his eyes scanning the platform. There's Moriarty now. You glanced out the window and caught a glimpse of a man with a high forehead and dark eyes racing towards the train, frustration etched on his face. Sherlock settled back, a faint smile playing on his lips, and...